Hi all. Um, so I haven't done the video for a long time, so I thought I'd um, do one today for two reasons. Um, one, because I've got another story from Judd um, about his mining days, um, which I think I, oh, I enjoy sharing, so I think it's good to share stories from him. Um, and two, it's kind of a little bit of a, a thank you, really, for him to him because he's been since as you all know my dad passed away and left me his workshop and his engine that you can see behind me that i finished um and he's been kind of the father figure to me in the last couple of years and it's been really nice to have so it's a bit of a tribute to him um because he's been that influential figure and he has stories and he's he'll give me the time of day um every day of the week no matter what Day, day or night you know um, so I thought I'd share this story with you that he's given me um, he doesn't necessarily divulge too much but he, I find his stories funny and, uh, and I've had some good feedback from his stories that he gives about his mining days so I'm going to share it to, uh, to you all now um, so yeah as it's like post Father's Day um, it's a bit of a a tribute to all those dads that are still around um, and a bit of a heads up to people that have lost their parents or like I have or they've lost their dads um, you know Father's Day is a, a hard day to get through um, you know even if you're a dad yourself which you know I'm fortunate I am um, and I've got two stepkids or future stepkids that are absolutely brilliant and uh, have treated me well. Um, so it's a bit of a tribute to all those out there that suffer but also are grateful for what they've got. So I hope you enjoy um, Judd's story uh, and I hope to get some more out of him. I know we'll get back to doing uh, wagon videos once I've cleared a bit of space. I'm currently extending the workshop um to make room because i'm overrun with with stuff in this workshop and i need to clear some space to to, to do it because every time i want to do some work i have to take it all outside um and like today's not been the best day because it's been torrential rain and then we get some sun and it's it's not ideal so i'm extending the workshop to give me a bit of space so thank you for watching um bear with me with projects and bits and bobs um, I'm getting orders out as fast as I can for those that have ordered stuff um, you may have seen or you may not have seen if I can reach them without getting too out of shot I have some of these in stock now you saw a post go out from myself and from Chris at Yorkshire Wagon Company of the new um, cast white metal cast um, buffer stocks RCH style the, this is the short one and we also do the longer one as well um, the longer one um, I've just taken delivery of a LNER brake van and it's come with in my eye the wrong buffer stocks on it so I'm hoping I can put some of these the longer version of these on it and make it look like a proper LNER wagon it's missing a lot of detail so I'm going to do that so that's a video for you to all to tune into one day when I get round to it um, so yeah there's lots going on uh, I haven't forgotten about anybody I've got you all in mind um, I've got lots of wagons to build and lots of stuff to finish off so but I need to get this extension done um, before I can progress quickly um, as opposed to uh, as I'm doing it at the minute which is very slow progress so thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed Judd's story see you soon yeah the bloke well there were two of them yeah and they go down first and they draw they drill oil you didn't have to do anything you had to take a bag of blasting powder yeah yeah uh, and they, they fired it and when they when they got when they went back in and they looked at me, fucking hell, fire! Fourteen, no, no way. Seven yard and a foot on the six foot one, because it was six foot 
cup, do you know what I mean? Yeah. We used to advance the cup here six foot every time. So it weren't just a bit coming off. I'd got six foot of So now you were saying about shoveling it by hand. Oh, that's what he's just remind. He's just reminded me actually. What I re what I watched this video on YouTube about it was noises of cave-ins coming, or not necessarily coming, but of the the oh, roof it, moving. When it were moving. Yeah. 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 And they were saying like you can hear it kind of coming towards you. Yeah, it's 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 that it talks to you, but sometimes you don't, and that's when it's a nasty bleeder. I mean, they one or two killed like that. Yeah. Number one. Uh, Brookhouse, he uh, he got it collapsed, not on him, on each side on him. Yeah. And by the time they got him out, he died by asphyxiation. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there were a uh, mate, uh, my father's. He got uh, he got buried at Brookhouse. He that killed him, man. They straight away, you know. You. Mm. Your story, you know, uh, uh, that used to live across the road from us, Andy. Paula, is it Pauline? Story? Yeah. Well, it's Shelton, weren't it, when she yeah. lived up there? Yeah. Uh, uh, her father. Oh, were it? Ah. Uh, it, uh... What's the noise like, though, when it's starting to creep? Well, to be quite honest, unless it's bad, you don't, you don't take any notice on it. You just, I mean... Our, uh, that six foot scene, I had to stand on the chock with his steel bar on my ear and pull it bleeding prop underneath to hold it so as I could get it, you know, so I could get it up. Because it weren't a, we used to try, we used to love a hydraulic prop because I could get that under and pump it up and then put it on my steel prop underneath to hold it. Yeah. But uh, you didn't always have one of them. And then uh, it, uh, I was doing that. I'd got it, got bar up. I would pull it bleeding prop underneath, told it, and the bleeding took thing come in and on my back, <laughs> broke on my back. Oh, not a lot, but oh. it were, it were about about that thick. It were. He made a good job on it when he cleaned it out. I went to the medical room after. And uh, yeah, I did like. It used to break like it was like razor sharp stuff. Mm. And uh, yeah, that day uh, I went in there and I got laid up bendy. Cleaned all that muck out of cut. <laughs> it sounds horrific. Because mm. no, you real... never think about it though. You don't honestly. There's no real antiseptic as such, really, was there? You know no, what I mean? Like, you kind of, nowadays, they can go, right, you've got a deep cut, we'll numb wherever, and you won't feel me doing whatever I've got to do, whereas back then it wouldn't have been such a thing, would it? Well, you never got it numbed. <laughs> it was just, right. The mum's uncle, he used to work at medical room at Treaton. Uh, he used to live on the end from where them, your nan lived. But he killed his son, didn't he? Maisie's dad. Oh. Yeah, no, indeed. Uh, he, uh, well, they, 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 you'd think they were doing it on purpose and all because they were a miserable set of bastards anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. Yeah. Uncle Frank. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. So on your first day of training then, you were just straight down there? No. When you first start at Pitt, uh, you, you go, uh, the then, when I'm on about then, I don't know now, well, there ain't any pits, is there? No. Uh, there were a training centre at Treaton. Right. Now, all the pits in this area, in South Yorkshire, if they were setting on, all their trainees had to come here to Treaton. Right. Because we had them from work, so, all, all, you know. And then uh, you did, I think it was 16, a 16 week there. Right. But in between that 16 week, besides playing five aside football, <laughs> we used to go down pit. And that was a shock to the system. 
because when you went down to Orgreave, it's it was steam winding. Right. Oh, that fast. You thought your guts were coming up through your, through your gullet by the time it, it, it used to go. <laughs> <laughs> and it, was that the main difference then with steam winding? It was kind of... It was quick. Harder, con hard, I suppose it must have been harder for them to control. No, it didn't, though. Not, not once they get used to it. I mean, uh, it were, we were all right after so long. You know, I mean, that was first time down a pit, so... You know, yeah. We never knew any difference. And then they show you different... Uh, they used to show you the tubs they use at Orgreave, whether they were only half the size or what, then what we had at Brookhouse. And then they used to show you different clips, what they call clips, what you used to clip on the rope. Right. To pull a, tra a train up. And uh, when you looked at them and, and you, you, they showed you hours, what we got, I think that them clips what we had, they must have weighed half a ton. They used to lift them up with one hand and that got to... You'd get your knee, got the clip onto it, and then dealing what, and like a pig's tail. Yeah. And they'd have to flick it onto that and turn it over, so it's a grip. And then they'd have to put it onto rope. And that's uh, when it's going, it's not stood. It's going all the time. Uh, and then... Uh, Why did it lose a leg? <laughs> tighten, tighten it up. We we, uh, we had a steel bar. Mm. They had to keep knocking it till it tightened. I mean, once or twice they got away. They were empties. Fullens used to come up the other way. But that trouble with them at Fullins, when they had full, you had to... I'm trying to think how I can explain this. This, that, the one that come up before was stood here. So this one was the one that we'd got off, because we, we had to knock that thing off, the clip, twist it off, throw that on one side, and then they had to go down to that other, what well, had already stood waiting. They had to get the hold of the hook on the D-link, and the de get the hook on that D-link, and then they'd be waiting <laughs> for them to come together. <laughs> <laughs> and Amazing, then, isn't it? There were one or two got their hands smashed. Yeah, I suppose because if it's moving all the time, you, there's no like, oh, just hang on a sec while I just get this together. No, no. It's like you've got one hit at it, haven't you, uh, really? And then if it didn't go, because that one that was just running into it, it had set that one off. So they'd be running down, holding on, got the hand underneath, trying to get the thumb into that hook and get all the D-link on that side and flick it on. But if they, if they failed, they got the thumb trapped in between bleeding D-link and hook. <gasps> Jesus. Scary stuff. It is when you think about it now, you know, what you, you, you didn't think about it. And when we, when you first went down Brookhouse, uh, we were working at pit bottom. You weren't allowed to go anywhere on Coalface until you were eighteen. Yeah. Uh, we used to, used to work at pit bottom with we, we, tubs mostly, because they used to run down, and many of the time they they've got away weight, and these these we used to call them squeezers. Because the tubs had come down, and if you got them right, it, it, you, they'd go boom, 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 boom. Yeah. If not, and they, they shot through, they'd fly straight through to where chair were, well, shaft. And you shot, and all but best. <laughs> yeah. hey, you'd laugh about it now, but you never thought about it then. No, I suppose it's just it was a job, wasn't it? And you yeah. could just got on with it. Yeah. I mean, the last I think the last thing I oh oh that's when we were uh, opening the new face up. I got put onto that team, and it 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 were it were good. But when I went back through the mother, I would never have gone back. They put me, uh, they sent me with Jimmy Dawson oh, yeah. and his gang. And I'm watching them when they were boring these oils. I think this is not going to do anything. Not, not going to do a fucking thing. 
and he was supposed to be one of the main men then, Jimmy. And I says, anyway, we went back. He fired us. He was Keith Lancashire, actually. Well, he was other man then. Uh, we went back, and it did hardly touch it. I says, there's made a fuck up for that. He says, can I do any better? I said, yes. <laughs> I said, I was doing this fucking job for years before that. I fucking come here. Before he started work. Anyway, I, I drilled oils. We went back and it was clear all the way. <laughs> <laughs> cunt, he says, cunt. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs>